Hello everybody and welcome to the SimHanger channel. My name's Mark and today I'll be giving you an update on my VR settings for use in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is an update and extension to my video 5 steps to better VR performance. In this video we'll only be covering any aspects that may have changed. So if you haven't watched that video I recommend that you do and then come back here. In this video we're going to be reviewing an optional Windows update, game mode and hardware accelerated scheduling. We're also going to be looking at which is the best driver for your Nvidia graphics card. And we'll be looking at an update and settings for OpenXR. This video is aimed at those that are using Windows Mixed Reality as the primary VR interface for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it doesn't cover those using Steam VR or those using the Oculus interface. Although obviously some of the general guidelines will still apply. It's been over three months since my last video on VR settings. And since that time, not only have there been updates in the sim, but almost all aspects of VR have been updated or changed in one form or another. So from time to time, I like to dip in and retest my settings to see what will give me the best VR performance. So today I'm going to take you through some of the tests that I did and some of the decisions I made regarding settings that's best for me. And I wish I could give you a set of parameters that you could use that will guarantee the best performance for you. But I can't do that unfortunately. All I can do is give you a guide of where to look and tell you what's worked for me. And this is because there's such a wide range of different CPUs, GPUs and so on. I am going to be using frames per second as comparisons, but in your test don't get hung up on frames per second. It's about how it feels in VR in the sim. Is it smooth? And if you've got something that's working already well for you, well, stick to that. The other thing that's become apparent is that in terms of NVIDIA graphics cards, Series 10, 20 and Series 30 owners, are having different experiences. So what works for me may not necessarily work exactly the same for you, but at least I can show you where to go and what settings to look at. So with all that out the way, let's get started. One of the many Windows 10 updates introduced at some stage apparently made stuttering worse in games generally and not specifically aimed at Microsoft Flight Simulator. This information was picked up from YouTuber Overkill. I'll leave a link to his video in the notes below. Microsoft have introduced a hotfix, but it's only showing in optional updates, so will not update automatically. To find it, click on the Windows Start button and then Settings. And from this submenu, choose Update and Security. You should now be on the Windows Update page. And there, unless you've disabled it, will be View Optional Updates. Click on that. As I've already installed this update, it's not showing, but it'll be showing under a category of Other Updates. Open Other Updates and you should see the hotfix there. If not, check out the Overkill video, it'll show you how to manually download it. As I've already downloaded it, let's look at my update history. I collapse the sub-menus, and the one we're interested in is Other Updates. The optional update that we want is KB5001391. I've installed this update, but I can't say I've noticed any major improvement. But also, performance is no worse. Reading the comments on Overkill's video, it looks like it has worked for some, and provided some significant FPS improvements. Just as a point of reference, these are my SIM settings for both monitor, PC, and for VR. With my system, most of the settings are high, ambient occlusion is on medium, as are volumetric clouds, as they're particularly heavy on the system. And I'm running my sim at 1440p. For VR, my settings are a combination of high and medium, with my render scaling being set at 70%. Render scaling being the one adjustment that has the biggest impact on performance. Ambient occlusion and volumetric clouds are again on medium. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling or HAGS as it's commonly referred to in game mode are two Windows functions designed to enhance gaming. 
and it is well worth trying these settings on and off in your system to see how your system performs. Some people swear by it and others avoid it like the plague. I tested this in 2D and VR mode and had mixed results. Let's take a look. First of all, here are the results of running it in 2D mode, again at 1440p. Both simulators are running in full screen mode and as you can see there's very little difference in terms of frame rate between having game mode and hags on and off. If I had to estimate I'd say they're averaging around 51 frames per second each. But note what happens when we change to window mode. There's a marked difference although both are performing at more or less the same level. I must admit I never expect such a dramatic drop in frame rates. It's something in the region of 20% or 10 to 12 frames per second. So if you're running Microsoft Flight Simulator in 2D mode, run it in full screen. Using the search function on your taskbar, type in Game Mode. The app will appear and click on that. The menu that comes up will give you the option to turn Game Mode on or off. And on the right hand side is Graphic Settings, click on that. And this will take you to the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. And once again, you can turn it on or off. Note that to activate a change in HAGS, you need to restart your PC. So back to my game mode and HAGS test. And this time in VR. And doing exactly the same flight. I'm taking off from Z Designs Meg's Field. Old runway heading over the water and then a left turn over Chicago Town Center. It's a good stress test as demonstrated in my earlier video. Whilst doing the flight in VR of course I can't see the frame rate, but I didn't need to. The difference between hags on and hags off was clearly evident in the headset. I think that the results you're seeing really speak for themselves. But again it's not just about frame rate, it's how it feels in sim. Bear in mind that I am recording this at the same time as flying in VR and you can add roughly 5 to 7 FPS for the recording. The hit's quite hard. For me with game mode and hags off it was a much smoother and more pleasant experience. It's worth experimenting and see what works on your system. For me it's game mode and hags off. Getting the best graphics driver software is important at any point of time, but particularly important for VR. In terms of Microsoft Flight Simulator, I've been experimenting with a number of different drivers. There's 457.30, 465.89 and the most recent one 466.27. I was quickly able to establish that the 466.27 driver, the most recent one, outperforms 465.89. So these are the two best performing drivers at this time. Let's have a shootout and see the results. During all my tests, my sim settings remained unchanged from those that I showed earlier. And I find this to be a great stress test of medium to hard difficulty with add-on scenery through Meg's field. I've got the time set to midday, so there are some shadows being cast. There's lots of water, so plenty of reflections, as well as some fairly heavy duty scenery in terms of a low flight over downtown Chicago. In terms of results, there's not a lot between the two different drivers. Both performed well. If I had to make a choice between the two, I would go for 457.3. And that's simply because it was slightly more consistent. Less peaks and troughs were experienced. So a slightly smoother experience overall, but I'm splitting hairs. There's very little between it. For me personally, I'm sticking with 466.27, but that's mainly due to the requirements of my video editing software. With either one of these drivers, you can't really go too wrong. For sim use only, I would choose 457.3. If you're looking for an older driver, just search for NVIDIA drivers, and you'll find the NVIDIA site. Then click on Advanced Driver Search. And here you get the option to search for the right driver for your card. In my case it's GeForce 20 Series and 2080 Ti. And the search function brings up a list of older drivers. And there is 4.57.3. You can download this and keep it on file for future reference. I do recommend that you uninstall your current driver first and then do a clean install 
of the older driver. Let's now turn our attention to OpenXR and in particular the Windows Download OpenXR development tools for Windows Mixed Reality as covered in my earlier video. It's a free download and available from the Microsoft Store. OpenXR is an open source program used by many developers and is the basis for Windows Mixed Reality. The application programming interface version hasn't changed but the runtime version with the Microsoft extensions has recently been updated. The OpenXR development tool is an add-on to the Windows Mixed Reality portal and it's important it's kept up to date so you can benefit from new features. To check that everything's updated go to the Microsoft Store and click on the three dots on the top right hand corner and from this drop down menu choose Downloads and Updates. Once on this page, click Get Updates and it will search your system to check whether your programs are up to date or not. In my case, I'm up to date. If there's anything that needs updating, it will prompt you to download. From a VR point of view, there's three that we're particularly interested in. The first is the Windows Mixed Reality Portal, the Open XR for Windows Mixed Reality and lastly and most importantly Windows Mixed Reality Open XR development tools. Now, as we can see along the left hand side they've all recently been updated in the latter part of April. These updates include important additional functionality so make sure you get them. Back to our OpenXR development tools and we want the third tab developer settings and these are the current settings that I'm using. I have the latest OpenXR Runtime Preview switch to on. My custom render scale is not ticked so it's at 100% by default and motion reprojection is disabled. Let's just talk about motion reprojection for a moment and understand what it is and what it does. To get a good VR experience you need 90 frames per second or something close to that. But even with the very best hardware we're not going to achieve 90 frames per second in VR. Motion projection in simple terms is where the system inserts additional frames to make up the deficit between what your actual FPS is and the required 90 frames per second. It does this dynamically. Prior to the update it could operate at 30 frames per second or above and now it can operate as low as 22.5. There can be some penalties in terms of visual clarity but can help eliminate or reduce stutters significantly without wishing to make this video any longer than it needs to be. I carried out a variety of tests including having motion reprojection on automatic but leaving the custom render scale unticked or at 100%. In my test I got a poorer performance. So based on recommendations from VR Flight Sim Guy, I decided to tick the customized render scale and turn that down to 70% and then do a test with motion reprojection both on and off. And these are the results. At first glance reprojection off appears to be way way better than reprojection on. But don't forget with reprojection on it's inserting additional frames and the frame counter is not able to capture those. So it's allowing me to have a flight far far smoother than what I would normally be able to do with this sort of frame rate. You'll also note that my frame rate with reprojection off is above what it was before. That's because I've turned down the render scale to 70% in OpenXR. A relatively small penalty in visual clarity for a big boost in performance. Reprojection off is a slightly better experience in this test and that's only because reprojection on is dropping below the 22, 22 and a half frames per second. Slight adjustment to my settings could correct that fairly easily. Also bear in mind as I said before I am recording at the same time. So the question is reprojection on or reprojection off? As a rule of thumb reprojection off will give you better clarity. And depending on both your system and where you're flying in terms of scenery intensity will depend whether or not you get a smooth flight experience. If your system can't handle it this is where motion reprojection comes into its own. By enabling motion reprojection could allow you to get a smooth VR flying experience in areas where otherwise it's just not possible. Your system's just not up to it. In the test we've just seen my choice is reprojection off. And that's simply because I was getting a smooth frame rate without it on. 
So if I did the same test, and let's say I had an i5 mid-range processor and say a 2070 graphics card, it's unlikely without motion projection I would have got a smooth flight experience, assuming the in-game graphics settings were the same as mine. Enabling motion projection may well have changed that and made the flight appear a whole lot smoother. Again, not exclusively, but as a general guideline, if you're an airliner guy doing long haul, I would have motion reprojection off. Clarity in the cockpit is probably more important than anything else. If you take a look at the flight that's on screen now, both the aircraft and the scenery is fairly light on the system, so motion reprojection for me is off. But if I was flying the Cessna over New York, well, I may well need to put it on. If you want to get the very best out of VR, it's going to be necessary for you to do some trial and error testing. And I hope that the information in this video has been of some help and guidance. The settings that I finally settled on are the render scale within OpenXR at 70%, motion projection off most of the time. I have HAGS and game mode off. I'm using the latest NVIDIA drivers, and I'm also using a render scale of 70% in SIM. Now I could lower my other settings and set it perhaps to 80%, but I find this is the best balance for me. Because I do a lot of low and slow flying, the graphics fidelity is very important. If you've got a slightly less capable machine, I'd leave the render scale in SIM at 70% and turn down some of your other settings. If you've got a monster machine, well, you can tweak those settings all the way up. If you know any other good tips and tricks, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care and bye for now.